that you have done great and mighty things that we cannot even understand. Thanks that in your holiness that you are still so kind to us and you are faithful to a thousand generations. We love and bless you, God. We ask for your blessing over this time. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can be seated. Good morning. It's good to be back with you. I remember occasionally in uh, undergraduate school and very rarely in medical school where the instructor would get up and say, just put your p pens and papers down and you don't need to take any notes. Um, and this is one of those talks. You only have to learn one thing, one word in the whole talk, and I'll tell you what that is in a little bit, and it's, it's only four letters long. <clears throat> I wanna talk to you about trees. Raise your hand if you've ever had a sermon on trees. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, <clears throat> you five are dismissed, if you want. <clears throat> Trees are something I've loved my whole life. Uh, nobody had to teach me how to love them. I just loved them. And the first tree I remember was a dogwood tree that cascaded to the ground, and as a snot-nosed little kid, I used to love to play under it. And uh, it's got beautiful white flowers, and it's got little red berries that supposedly are poisonous, but I could never get my little brother to eat any of them. <clears throat> the second tree I remember was a Chinese silk tree, or it's called a mimosa, at my grandparents' house, and I used to jump onto it from the porch, and it's got like dinosaur skin and, and uh, uh, really wild, exotic-looking flowers on it. And the first tree I ever helped plant uh, was that of the brand new elementary school in my little uh, village. And uh, it, um, I, I helped my father and my grandfather plant some trees around it, helped. I just poured little buckets of water on the, on the roots. Um, and uh, that, that little elementary school was visited uh, by the first lady of the United States because we were the first all electric school in the nation. And uh, Lady Bird Johnson came with her entourage and everything, and she said, anyone can plant a tree or shrub. And she got about five cylinders and uh, syllables into the word shrub. And, and, I, and I'd heard it from the highest powers in the land that planting trees was good. As I grew older, I became a carpenter and I worked with trees that way. I was married by uh, a rabbi to my wife under a tree, which is kosher. It stand, trees stand in as chuppahs, or, or, or prayer uh, shawls, uh, to be married under. Um, and I've planted them all my life. Uh, in residency, I talked everyone on the street into let me plant trees. And I can go back on Google Earth now and, and, and see those. And I've planted them everywhere I've gone. Uh, when I became a Christian in my late in life, <clears throat> uh, we started going to a church, and uh, that church owned a school, and there weren't any trees around it. And I said to one of the pastors, can I please plant trees around the school and the church? And I explained that it would be a good thing. And the pastor looked at me and said, Matthew, you have the theology of a tree hugger. This was not a compliment. <clears throat> uh, the church was a Bible-believing church. They believed that Scripture is the inerrant word of God. That's why we went to that church. 
And so I was left to wonder, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe God doesn't care about these plants called trees, which is kind of odd that he wouldn't because trees keep the air on. Um, they, they give us water. There would be no water on any continent more than three or 400 miles inland if it weren't for trees. It's actually trees that lift the water over into the interior of the continents. Um, they have made all of transportation on this planet until very recently possible. You couldn't get across water without a boat and they were all made out of trees until about the time of the Civil War. Um, they've made our houses, they've made our paper. Um, there are still trees that are water mains in New York City. There are trees that have been there over a century that are, are the big water mains coming in, uh, into, into the city. We have nuclear submarines in the uh, fleet that the main bearings in the nuclear submarine are made out of wood. Um, and, and, and probably one of the most important things to many of you is two of the most essential food groups come from trees, coffee and chocolate. <clears throat> well, the good news is that um, I, when I became a Christian, I had an instruction manual. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what any particular person says, this is what I go by. Uh, and so I opened the scripture and began to discover what does God say about trees. Um, God loves trees. That's just the bottom line. God loves trees. He loves them so much that the only thing on the planet he gives a ring to on every one of their birthdays. Um, there is a tree... I have to remember to say that line again. <laughs> There's a tree on the first page of the Bible. There's a tree on the first Psalm. There's a tree on the first page of the New Testament, and not just Christ's family tree. There's another one in there. And there's a tree on the last page of the Bible. Every major character in Scripture has a tree associated with them. Every major character has a tree associated with them. And every major theologic event in Scripture has a tree marking the spot. The Bible refers to itself as a, take a guess, tree. Yeah, that's the only answer here. Proverbs 3, 18. The tree of life, those who take hold of her are blessed. Um... Trees talk to each other in Scripture. They clap their hands and they sing. And, and, they, and they shout for joy. And the interesting thing is where they do this. They shout for joy. It's a prophecy when the Lord comes back to judge the earth. People, it says in the Bible, are going to be hiding under rocks, trying to get away from this judgment, not the trees. They finally get their day in court and they got an honest judge on their hands finally. And so they shout for joy. And all this stuff about trees talking and shouting and singing, people just dismissed as poetry in the past. But in the last 10, 15 years, it has become an established scientific fact that trees do in fact talk to each other. This Bible was written by the creator of those trees. He knew it. So trees actually talk to each other with something that scientists dubbed the wood wide web. <clears throat> and if you look at the history of Christendom, trees have been a big topic. The oldest piece of English literature is the dream of the rood, an old English word for tree. And it is, uh, it is a uh, telling of the passion story from the point of view of the tree. Christian art has depicted trees. The oldest oil painting on the planet, the Ghent altarpiece in, in Ghent, Belgium, 
and, and uh, it, it's on my bucket list. I want to see it. It's, it's, it's one of the most beautiful pieces of art on the planet. There's actually a book about just how many times it's been stolen, 13 times in its hundreds of years. Um, and it depicts trees so beautifully. And, and it's not just ancient literature and ancient art. If we, if we come forward a little bit, George D. MacDonald, a uh, great Christian writer, uh, and, and you may not be familiar with him, but you're familiar with his students. But he wrote a book I, I particularly love called Behind the North Wind, in which he depicts heaven in this tree. And the, and the writers he inspired were C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. And Tolkien's books and Lewis's books, the good guys talk to trees, live around trees, save trees. For goodness sakes, there's elves in them. Elves live in trees, right? They make cookies there. Anyways. <clears throat> And the bad guys, Sauron and Tash, hate trees, and they cut them down, even talking trees. And yet, only five of you in this room have ever had a sermon or a talk on trees in Scripture. And uh, I'd like to go to the first slide. Next slide. Okay. This is all cribbed from a book I have coming out called Reforesting Faith, but it won't be out till next April. Next slide. Okay, these are titles of sermons uh, by Charles Spurgeon on trees. They're just a few. These are just the titled sermons by him. Go to the next slide. These are sermons by uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones. I picked these two preachers in particular because they're rock solid and orthodox. And if you're not familiar with them, ask one of the professors in the room, and they'll tell you they're orthodox. Can I get a witness from a professor in the room? Amen. All right. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you can go to the next slide there, uh, which is a placeholder. Um, and I want to uh, just dip our toe into the Bible. I've only got a couple of minutes with you, and I've got to reverse uh, 100 years of trees being deforested from, from faith and Scripture. So let's, let's dip our toe into the Bible. Go to the next slide. This is the first three chapters of the Bible, and every sentence that has a tree in it is highlighted. That should give you pause. You should wonder why people are cutting them out, why they're not in the sermons anymore. Um, but in this first part of the Bible, uh, trees are created on the third day, not an accident, three, very important number <laughs> in the Bible. Uh, they're created on the third day, and trees are the highest part of the, that family, and flowers are the lowest. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, uh, and if we took a look at what's happening here with these, uh, the first thing you're going to see for you biology majors is a back and forth about how, how trees exist and everything in here. And it's a classification of angiosperms and genosperms still used by all biologists today in how you classify the plant kingdom. Um, uh, you're going to find photosynthesis in here, and you're going to find that's where all the calories on the planet come from. Um, you'll find uh, that there's a relationship between trees and humanity. And one of those relationships is that there are only two things in the Genesis creation stories that God touches and creates with his hands. He speaks everything into existence, but wait a second. He forms Adam out of the dust of the ground, and he blows the breath of life into his nostrils, and he pivots and he plants the trees. Next slide. There, do you know what kind of tree that is? That is a human respiratory tree. And it sends chills up and down my spine when I think about God blowing the breath of life into Adam, pivoting and making this thing. Great artists use the same design more than once. Um, what else is in these first three chapters with trees? What, what has been subtracted? Well, God places Adam under the trees, and, 
And then in Genesis 2.9, God says the trees are pleasing to the eye. That is a one-off line in Scripture. That is what God thinks is pretty. That is God's aesthetic. And it's going to hold up throughout the entire Scripture. If God's going to tell people how to make a candle stand, it's going to look like a tree. If God is going to tell them how to decorate the corbels on the temple, it's going to look like a tree. If God is going to tell them what kind of baubles to put on the bottom of the high priest's robe, it's going to be a part of a tree. God's aesthetic of beauty centers on a tree. <clears throat> God, um, God uh, puts the tree of life in the center of the garden. And we know that trees create oxygen, something nobody knew until uh, fairly recent in human history. So trees are aptly named. The tree of life is aptly named on all levels. And God puts the tree of knowledge of good and evil right beside it. There's no setup. It's probably got a warning sign on it. Do not touch, you will die. And, and, and in Genesis 2.15, God gives humanity their marching orders. You are to dress and keep the trees. That's how it's uh, translated in the King James. It's also sometimes uh, uh, translated protect or tend and, and, and protect the trees. And so that's our job. And we're given kind of human agency. We, we are told not to touch this tree. But of course, Adam and Eve don't listen. And they eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And humanity falls. What kind of tree was it? I don't know. Usually they have paintings of Eve uh, reaching for an apple, right? You've seen that. And the only connect, it does, the Bible doesn't say that. But it's interesting that the word malum, the Latin for apple, is also the word for evil. I don't know which came first on that one, chicken of the egg kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and, and the first thing that happens when Adam and Eve sin and they fall is they run and they tear a leaf off of a tree to hide their shame. It is the first act of destruction, if you will, the first time that we deface God's creation merely for vanity. And if that's not enough, we go and we run and we hide behind trees. And, and God comes. So it, to me, it, it, it gets hard to tell the gospel or the need for God or, or the fall if you begin to subtract all the trees from Scripture. So let's take a look at how trees have been treated in Bibles in the past. Next slide. Next slide. Whoa, we're missing a slide. Okay, um, there's a slide, there supposed to be, of two Bibles. Uh, there are two King James Bibles off my shelf. There they are. The one on the left is 140 years old. It was gotten to me by a bizarre manner, which means God's involved. And the one on the right is the exact same Bible, 140 years later, same publisher, same study Bible, 140 years later. If we looked up trees in the study section in the 140-year-old Bible, we would find 20 pages in six-point type. You can go to the next uh, slide. Pages like this. There are page after page of full-color plates of trees. You can run through uh, some of those. That's Abraham's oak. Anybody that was a Christian 100 years ago would have known about this tree. Next. Uh, next. You get the idea. Next. Next. Now, you might say, well, Dr. Sleep, you're cherry-picking. You're just going to one Bible. No, nope, this is a 1940 Thompson's Chain Reference Bible. <laughs> And this is how trees are used and uh, used to depict things. Next slide. Next slide. <clears throat> Words around trees are actually being subtracted from uh, the Bible. If you add up the words tree, seed, leaf, branch, root, and fruit, I think, yeah, under there, <laughs> and you count them up in the King James. Now, these aren't, these aren't specific tree names. These aren't the hundreds of olives or oaks or terebinths or acacias or so on and so forth. These are just associated words. 
They sh these show up about a thousand times in the King James, and you begin to drop down from there. The ES ESV Bible, which I carry, I think it's a fabulous translation. Nonetheless, they're subtracting trees from it. And I want to show you what I think is an egregious subtraction. Next slide. This is from the ESV. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Planting trees and calling on the name of the Lord is an established routine. Abraham is the first person in the Bible to plant trees, but he didn't just plant a tree. Go to the next slide. He planted a grove of trees. That's, there's not a scholar in the world that can disagree, and yet we're translating it wrong. He planted a grove. Abraham did things big. That's Abraham's style. And so trees are being subtracted from sermons, from art, from literature, um, and, and literally from the Bible. <clears throat> Next slide. It's interesting, though, that people are interested in trees. They've, because we're made in God's image, he blew that breath into us. He blew a respiratory tree into us. He gave us the dependence to the trees that give us oxygen. And so these are books I took off my shelf, put on the floor, and took a picture of. And they're all books about trees. And some of them are bestsellers and everything. And yet there isn't a single Christian book on trees. And that, to me, is disturbing. <laughs> if you go through the Bible, and I've only got a moment to introduce you to something that's taken a century to subtract from theology, from sermons, from art, and from the Bible. Uh, so that's not much time. <clears throat> but if you were to skip through the Bible in your mind and thinking about it, you know, Abraham meets the angel of the Lord under the oaks of Mamre. He's the first to plant a grove of trees in the Bible. He's the first to buy a plot of land with trees on it uh, to bury his wife, uh, Sarah. Isaac has uh, uh, goings on with trees and carries uh, trees on his back for three days. Jacob falls asleep in Luz. Luz means almond trees and dreams of a wooden ladder that connects heaven to earth. Deborah, a judge of Israel, had the oomph to make all of Israel come to her, and she judged Israel under a palm tree. Gideon is called by the Lord at a tree. David is called into battle by a tree, and his vain son Absalom is caught up by his hair in a tree. Um, Solomon uh, had knowledge of all trees, it says in Scripture. <clears throat> Jesus um, works in a carpentry shop. That is not an accident in Scripture. And even though people are trying to erase that and saying uh, there's Jewish you know, there's tour guides in Israel. I shouldn't have said that. There's tour guides in Israel that will tell you, no, Jesus was a stonemason. If you come up to me and tell me that, I will squash you like a bug. I will take you through the Bible and show you why that ain't true. Um, he's in a carpenter's shop on purpose, and we have first century writing talking about Jesus the carpenter. Um, and so I know that Jesus was a carpenter, and he calls his disciples from trees, and he calls Zacchaeus down from one, and he, and, he, and he says that the kingdom of heaven is like a tree branching out, and he describes faith as being like a seed and growing into a, a tree. And so Jesus is all about trees. Now, Jesus is tough to kill. Uh, we've had so much of the boy band Jesus thrown at us, I think, in modern times that we think he's a mamby-pamby. Uh-uh. He's a tough guy. I was a carpenter. He was a carpenter. This is the kind of carpenter that carries two three-quarter inch sheets of plywood on his own. I worked around some of those. Um, he's tough to kill. They've tried since he was born. People tried to stab Jesus. Did it work? They tried to stone him. Didn't work. They tried to throw him off a cliff. It didn't work. You can't starve the man. He can go 40 days without food, get into the ring with the toughest opponent on the planet, and walk out a winner after three rounds. He is tough to, uh, no sense in trying to drown him. Just walk, yes, you got it. Just walk away from it. <clears throat> the only thing that can kill Jesus is what? A tree. 
A tree is the only thing that can kill Jesus. And the only thing that he ever harms is a tree. And the only tree he ever mentions is a specific kind of tree. And I'm not going to tell you which one. I want you to go to your Bibles and figure it out. Um, <clears throat> and so the language about, of Christ is very, very specific, very centered on these trees. And it's an interesting thing that when Christ is killed, it's at Passover. And I asked them to put this up here because um, tree, uh, trees make doors. They always have. Um, and there's a description of a door in the first Passover. And it's got a lintel and two posts. Uh, and that, that structure of a door is described in Exodus. And we're told when you take the Passover lamb's blood and you spread it all around this, that that door is locked. And the angel of death cannot get through it. And Jesus the carpenter makes another kind of tree. It's an odd tree. It's an odd door. Because it's made out of two pieces of wood. And when you put the Passover lamb's blood on this door, it opens. That's the only door to heaven. That's the only way in. And Jesus, with that crown of thorns, is absorbing into his body the curse, the thorns, in Genesis 3. This is a story that's tied together, and trees are the crucial link between them uh, throughout Scripture. And it, as if to underscore this point, three days, because the good news isn't that Jesus was crucified. The good news is what happens three days later. <laughs> And you know the story. Jesus was put in the tomb, and Mary comes down to pay her respects three days later. If you've ever lost a family member, you know that by three days you're just raw with crying. And Mary went down and to pay her respects, and her eyes are red, and she sees a man. And she mistakes him. She does not mistake him for a soldier. She does not mistake him uh, for somebody else that's come to visit. She does not mistake him for a businessman. She mistakes him for what? A gardener. Jesus, that's no mistake. He is the new Adam who has come back not to tear the leaves off of these trees, not to hide behind them, but to garden them as we were supposed to in the first place. <clears throat> you might ask yourself when you leave here, why all this subtraction? I think you're going to be the first generation in a, in a few generations that actually puts the trees back in scripture, puts them back in art, puts them back in music, um, puts them back into literature. Um, but you might ask yourself, why have they been subtracted? And they have been subtracted, I promise you. <clears throat> and you could come up with fancy arguments like it's a new Gnosticism or a new dualism or a, some other kind of heresy, and that, that may be true. But after I wrote this book, what I really realized was who hates trees and who loves them? Who's against trees and who's for them? Lewis and Tolkien got it right. <clears throat> Think of it this way. You may not have had a lecture on trees, and even before I gave this one, you would probably be able to answer this question correctly. Which has more trees, heaven or hell? Hint, trees need water. Heaven is a place of trees. Heaven is a place of trees. Gold is good for nothing but asphalt there. But heaven is a place of trees. I didn't get this until I heard uh, J. Vernon McGee talking about it once. Heaven is a place of trees. And I want to take you to heaven at the end of the Bible. This is the last chapter in Scripture. This is my hope. This is what my Savior died on a tree for. This is what I'm aiming at. 
Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Is it important to get to that tree? Ah, uh, you betcha. The, the last chapter of the Bible goes on, and it's, you know, the, this is everything highlighted that has a, a tree in the sentence. It's the same as the front. It's over a third. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life, that they may enter the city by the gates. I actually think this is more understandable in the King James, so I'll read that. Um, Blessed are they that do his commandments. Your goal is the tree of life. And as if to close the whole thing out, Jesus in, in the last I am, the first I am in the Bible is by a tree, and the last I am is I am the root of David, the bright morning star. Your goal, my goal, is to make it to a place of trees. That's why they're being subtracted. Um, so the answer to the question or the, is free. You got it. Okay. <clears throat> Let me pray for us. I'm, I wished I had this book out. It won't be out until, oh, can you go to the next slide? Next slide. Next slide. If you point your thing at that, there is an eight page, your phone or whatever. There's an eight-page article in Christianity Today on uh, trees in Scripture. You can read it for free in your library, or you can re read it for free that way. Um, and uh, it's, it explains a little bit more. I, I wrote the article, and I hope you enjoy it. So let me pray for us, and then, and then dismiss you. Heavenly Father, you sent us the Word. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, who dwelt among us, and He is the tree of life. And in Isaiah, you prophesied what He would look like, and you said that He would be like a little tree that grew up before us, and yet we were not attracted to it. There's something about us that doesn't like things that give life, because our great-grandparents, Adam and Eve, chose death. And I pray for these men and women here that they choose life and they support the things that give life, including the trees on this planet. And I ask that, uh, uh, that this, this gospel that you wrote in trees that begins in it and ends in it um, is brought back in its fullness and uh, refreshes us. And I, and I pray that everyone here meets you at the tree of life in heaven and is healed by eating from that tree of life. I ask this in the carpenter of Nazareth's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you. Hey, 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 oak trees, pine trees, Maple trees, palm trees, cherry trees, apple trees, willow trees, spruce trees, sycamore, peach trees, different trees you haven't seen before. Hey, I love the trees, feel the breeze, from lakes to seas, we all need trees. Light from the sun helps all the trees grow, they dance all around when the wind starts to blow. They clean carbon dioxide from the air. They make oxygen we can breathe everywhere. Trees provide shade from the sun's hot heat. They grow lots of fruit that we all like to eat. Trees give animals a place to rest. That's where the mother bird builds her nest. Oak trees, pine trees, maple trees, palm trees, cherry trees, apple trees, willow trees, spruce trees, sycamore, peach trees, different trees you haven't seen before. Hey, I love the trees, feel the breeze, from lakes to seas, we 
we all need trees trees make the world a better place for us to live trees never take but instead they always give trees can make a forest all over the earth and they dig roots really deep down in the dirt trees are my favorite thing to climb trees take all my problems off my mind the world would be a very sad place to be and it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for trees oak trees pine trees maple trees palm trees cherry trees apple trees willow trees spruce trees sycamore peach trees different trees you haven't seen before hey i love the trees feel the breeze from lakes to seas we all need trees Don't think about me really, just wanna sing the blues Feels like a song that never stops Feels like it's never done Gotta get that fire, fire back in my bones Before my heart, heart turns into stone Soon somebody please pops the megaphone I'll shout it on the count of three Joy, 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 down in my heart, down in my heart to Joy, 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 down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. It's quite a little longer, my friend. It's all worth it in the end. But when you go.
Drives faith, and I don't know all of the outcomes. Don't know what happens tomorrow, but when that ocean of doubt comes, don't let me drown in my sorrow, and don't let me stay at the bottom. I feel like this hole is too deep to climb. I've been looking for a way out, but I settle for a peace of mind. Picking up the pieces of my life and hoping that I put together something right. Tell me all I got is all I need. Tell me you gon' help me stay and fight. The world trying to play with my soul. I'm just trying to find where to go. I'm trying to remember the way. I'm trying to get back to my home. But I can't do this on my own That's why I'm just trusting in you Cause I don't know where else to go And I don't know what else to do no, don't let the fear Make you feel like to the second letter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me take it there. Please brag on what you get. How you smash your first week sales? Oh, yeah. And they like your oh, numbers. Yeah. Make vaccines that heal weak sales. Oh, yeah. You grab your money, go somewhere beside yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get it. I'm going with our voice. Uh, where they got them bullets flying like it's PowerPoint. Uh, and then I'm going down to hot go. We get chances of making it out of block go. Oh. I'm with the South Side kids to the reach age. And then head for the keys like spring break. Cause I believe that we intervene with a knees great. And go and beat change. Let me talk about it. I get it popping, popping. You probably got a problem. Before they can stop me, gotta cut my power like I'm Amish. Huh? Hold the torch up high in the dick dark. The dream works no matter how bad the picks are. Cause I see how bad the globe is. But they don't know how bad I hope is. They don't know how bad we want this. It ain't where we at, boys. Where we going? <laughs>
dresses up the you but that's part when you got 12 years of wax school so it's rap or it's tax either way you get them bars when they give up we get charged what's the system to our guys we don't fight for the w uh, uh, but we fight from a w never said it wouldn't be trouble but buddy bring trouble to whatever troubles you I struggle through multiple valuable things that are wonderful we suffer to hustle to what the truth he wants to humble you humble you take you and break you and make you to another dude take away any other truth he's the one that can cover you all right Let's go!